welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the third video in IB Biology Topic 11, Animal Physiology, where we will be looking at osmoregulation, malfigian tubules, the kidneys, and nephrons. In the first video of IB Biology Topic 1, we introduced homeostasis as the maintenance of a constant internal environment. When this occurs with reference to water, it is known as osmoregulation, defined as the regulation of water and solute concentration within an organism. All organisms can be classified into two groups based on their osmoregulation. Osmoregulators are organisms that maintain a solute concentration different to that of their surroundings. This occurs in most terrestrial animals and freshwater fish. Osmoconformers are organisms that maintain a solute concentration identical to that of their surroundings. This occurs in most marine organisms. Regardless of the method, osmoregulation is an important process to facilitate metabolic reactions and prevent accumulation of waste products. To further prevent toxicity, waste products are also continuously removed via the process of excretion. For your IB Biology higher level exam, the IB expects you to recall the ways in which fish, mammals and birds excrete their nitrogenous waste. Fish excrete their waste as ammonia, which is advantageous as it requires little energy to produce. However, it is very toxic and so must be diluted and removed very quickly using water. Although, since they swim in water, this is hardly a concern. Mammals excrete their waste as urea which is advantageous as it is only toxic at abnormal levels. However, it requires some energy to produce and still requires water for dilution. Birds excrete their nitrogenous waste as uric acid, which is advantageous as it is insoluble in aqueous solutions and so can be stored within eggs. And it requires no water to dilute. However, it requires a great deal of energy to produce. It is therefore clear that the form of nitrogenous waste produced is a balance between toxicity and energy input. So, you now understand osmoregulation and excretion as a process. But how are they carried out? Well, this varies between arthropods and humans. Let's start with arthropods. Arthropods do not contain blood, but instead a fluid known as hemolymph within the body cavity which surrounds internal organs. Most arthropods conduct the movement of ions and water out of this fluid through the Malfigian tubule system, which regulates solute concentration. The tubule system is connected to the arthropod's alimentary canal, which consists of a long continuous tube divided into a foregut, midgut, ileum, hindgut, and rectum, and branching off the ileum are the Malfigian tubules, like tentacles on an octopus. So how do they carry out osmoregulation? Well, active transport by lining cells of the Malfigian tubules moves sodium, potassium and ammonium from the hemolymph into the tubules. This creates a concentration gradient, drawing water in by osmosis. Tubule cells then convert the absorbed ammonia into uric acid. The tubules empty the resulting uric acid solution into the hindgut, where it is mixed with semi-digested food. In the rectum, some ions are reabsorbed, causing water reabsorption by osmosis. This creates dehydrated uric acid paste, which is later excreted with undigested food as a paste. So, you know how arthropods osmoregulate, but what about humans? Cue the kidneys. The kidneys are two bean-shaped organs located in the mid-back. Each consists six main structures you must be comfortable labelling and drawing. They are an outer cortex, drawn as one-fifth of the width of the kidney, an inner medulla, drawn as four-fifths of the width of the kidney, a renal pelvis, containing a system of chambers that collect fluid, a ureter, to remove urine and transport it to the bladder, a renal artery, to supply blood, as an artery, it is drawn with a narrow lumen, a renal vein, to remove blood, which as a vein, is drawn as a wider lumen. So, what do the kidneys do? Well, their role is to filter blood, which occurs within many functional units known as nephrons. A nephron is a one-cell thick tube containing a fluid created from blood called glomerular filtrate. 
Each nephron is split into five main sections. The Bowman's capsule is a cup-shaped region with a porous layer to absorb glomerular filtrate, filling the nephron. The proximal convoluted tubule is a twisted section which reabsorbs sodium, chloride ions, glucose, amino acids, and water. The loop of Henle is a long loop of the nephron which reabsorbs water by carrying glomerular filtrate from the cortex into the medulla down a descending limb and back out to the cortex in an ascending limb. The distal convoluted tubule is a second twisted section which also reabsorbs sodium ions and chloride ions. And the collecting duct is a wide section which fine tunes water reabsorption and carries filtrate through the medulla to the renal pelvis. So, how is glomerular filtrate created from blood? Well, via the process of ultrafiltration. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.